Hello comic book guys and gals and welcome to Comic Mag Musings. I am your handsome yet humble host, Bill Miller. Welcome to the final installment of our Top 100 Pre-Code Western Comics. Western comics became popular in the years immediately following World War II, when superheroes went out of style. Adult comics readership had grown during the war years, and returning servicemen wanted subjects other than superheroes in their books. The popularity of the Western genre in comic strips and other media gave birth to Western comics, many of which began being published around 1948. Most of the larger publishers of the period jumped headfirst into the Western arena during this period, particularly Marvel Comics and its forerunners Timely Comics and Atlas Comics. Kid Colt Outlaw debuted in 1948, running until 1979, though it was primarily a reprint title after 1967. The company soon established itself as the most prolific publisher of Western comics, with other notable long-running titles including Rawhide Kid, Two-Gun Kid, and Wild Western. Before we get to our comics, let's have a quick reminder of the criteria. The comics had to have been published prior to carrying the Comics Code Authority seal, and the title had to primarily be a Western title. Some of the eligible titles are from other genres, but they switch to a Western context for a period of time. No photo covers are allowed. Lastly, these are not necessarily either the most popular or the most expensive Western books. They are simply the best Western comic book covers, in my humble opinion. It was a maddening task to rank numbers 20 to 1, but I enjoyed every minute of it. I made a series of five videos with 20 entries in each one. So please join me for the last 20 covers as we count down the top 100 pre-code Western comic book covers. All right, leading off our list at number 20, we have Western Comics, issue 21, from DC Comics, out in March of 1951. Cover art by Howard Sherman. Any type of witch doctor or shaman covers always seem to be right my wheelhouse. At 19, we have Lone Rider, issue number 20, from Farrell. Published in June of 1954. Unfortunately, the cover artist is unknown. This is a gorgeous black cover featuring a haunting image of the mysterious Lone Rider. Riding in at number 18, it's The Outlaws, issue number 13, from Star Publications. Produced in September of 1953. L.B. Cole with the cover art. We have murderous outlaws kicking up a storm of dust with a fire-choked background and expertly drawn horses. At number 17, it's Women Outlaws, issue number 5, from Fox, hitting the stands in March of 1949. Yet again, we do not know the identity of the cover artist. A fantastic cover with a bandit and his Native American gal pal. Galloping up at number 16, it's Western Comics, issue number 19, from DC Comics. Published in January of 1951. Howard Sherman with the cover art. A beautiful, dark, and foreboding ambush cover with a startling dash of yellow in the trade dress. I love it. At number 15, it's Cow Puncher, issue number 7, from Avon. Published in 1949. Cover art by Jimmy Thompson. Good girl art, and you're immediately pulled into the center of the image with the wagon wheel providing perfect framing. Shooting off at number 14, it's Lone Rider, issue number 2, from Farrell, produced in June of 1951. Yet again, very unfortunate, 
but we don't know the cover artist. A wonderful black cover with flames of plenty and lone rider in bondage in the hot seat. Firing away at number 13, we have White Rider and Super Horse, issue number 5, from Star Publications. Hitting the shelves in 1951. Cover art chores handled by L.B. Cole. A beautiful, almost impressionistic image by L.B. Cole. I love the spotted horse and the detail on the saddle blanket. At number 12, we have Women Outlaws, issue number one, from Fox, out in July of 1948. The cover artist is unknown. Now you had me at Women in Garters. Firing away at number 11, it's The Outlaws, issue number 12 from Star Publications, produced in June of 1953. Cover art by L.B. Cole. Six shooters, blazing, cowboys gunned down, and ghostly floating heads all add up to this cover being a winner. Leading off the top 10 at number 10, we have the Westerner Comics, issue number 27 from Wanted Comics Group, published in June of 1950. Cover art duties handled by Mort Lawrence. And here we have a lovely redhead in leather who happens to be a wanted woman. Spurring in at number nine is Wild Bill Hickok, issue number four, from Avon out in July of 1950. Cover art by Harold Winfield Scott. This is an amazing image of a wonderfully painted cowboy who seems to fade into an impressionistic background. What a visual treat. Branded at number eight, it's Bobby Benson's B Bar B Riders, issue number 14 from Magazine Enterprises, published in August of 1952. Cover art by Dick Ayers. A woman in bondage, the hero swooping in in a creepy scientist bent on murder and skeletons, heads and faces strewn about. This has a strong horror flavor. Too bloody, thumbs up. Tipping its hat at number seven is Blazing West, issue number four, from ACG, published in March of 1949. Again, the cover artist is unknown. I just love this cover. It is simple, yet so impactful. The woman inside the cabin is oblivious to the danger just outside. At number six, we have White Rider and Super Horse, issue number six, from Star Publications, produced in March of 1951. Cover art chores handled by L.B. Cole. The fire, the horse, and the colors steal this scene. The purples and blacks provide contrast for the warrior atop the horse. The saddle blanket is a wonderful touch. Leading off our top five, we have Chief Victorio's Apache Massacre, issue number zero, from Avon, out in 1951. Cover art by Everett Raymond Kinsler. A scary image as this cowboy is about to meet his doom. Everything in this image is rendered well. What an amazing artist. Roping in at number four, we have Silver Kid Western, issue number two, from Stanley Morse, produced in December of 1954. Cover art by Eugene Hughes. 
a classic hanging cover complemented by one of the best trade dresses of the era. Giddy upping in at number three is Women Outlaws, issue number two, from Fox. Hitting the stands in September of 1948. Unfortunately, we do not know the identity of the cover artist. She is a mean, mean woman. The cowgirl on this cover seems to be a precursor to the gun malls of the 20s and 30s. Stampeding in at number two, we have Cowpuncher issue number two from Avon. Produced in September of 1947. We're not certain of the cover artist, but it is believed to be Jack Kamen. Good girl art, a red skirt, and a brutal impending branding send this cover nearly all the way to the top. And at number one on our list, we have Indian Warriors, issue number eight, from Star Publications, published in September of 1951. The legendary L.B. Cole with the cover art. Like most Cole covers, the colors are stupendous. For me, the real joy is in seeing the gorgeous spotted and painted horse, the wonderfully detailed shield, and the colorful saddle blanket by a master artist. And that will do it for numbers 20 through 1 as we finish counting down the top 100 pre-code western comics. I hope you enjoyed the series and I hope you got to see some books you either haven't seen before or haven't seen in quite some time. Please leave a comment and tell me your thoughts. Do I have some ranked too high or too low? Were there some that shouldn't have made the list at all? Was I way off base with number one? I'd love to hear your feedback, and don't forget to join me for the next series as we count down the top 100 pre-code horror comics.